Okay, we're going to take a look at some logarithmic functions. Logarithmic functions. Now, to look at a logarithmic function, we're going to start off with um, looking at the inverse of an exponential function because the inverse of an exponential function is the logarithmic function. Okay, so here we have an exponential function. We have some base raised to the x power, and that represents function f. Now here's the inverse of function f. We have the log base b of x. Okay? All right. So a log is the inverse of an exponential function, as you can see right here. Inverse of function f. And here's function f, b of x, b to the x power. <clears throat> Okay, so let's start off with this basic equation here. It says, what is the inverse of f of x equals 2 to the x? Well, this is exponential because x is in the exponent. Okay, so it says graph f of x and its inverse on the graph below. So I started this off. So plugging in negative 2 in for x, we get 1 fourth and so on. Plugging these numbers in for x, we get these numbers, okay? Now, remember, it's been a while, but inverse, the first thing we always do to find the inverse is to switch the x and the y, okay? So that's how I got this table. I took the x and the y coordinate, and I switched them, okay? So this table represents f of x, which is... 2 to the x power. This table represents log, the logarithmic function, okay? The inverse of this function, okay? So I took these points and I plotted them, and that gave me an exponential function. This is our exponential function. Now notice it's approaching the x-axis which means that yes, this has a, a horizontal asymptote, okay? And that horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero, okay? Now, graphing these points, one-fourth, negative two, one-fourth, negative two, one-half, negative one, 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3. All right. And here is our logarithmic function. Okay. So, since they're inverses of each other, we have a line of symmetry. Do you remember the line of symmetry for inverses? Here's our line of symmetry. And remember that that is y equals x. Okay? So, if an exponential function has a horizontal asymptote. A logarithmic function, which is the inverse, is going to have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's talk about domain and range. Let's take a look at domain. Goes left infinitely. Okay. And it goes right infinitely. So we could just say all real numbers. Okay. Range. Well, we know it goes up infinitely, but it does not go across this horizontal asymptote. So we could just say y is greater than zero. All the y-coordinates are greater than zero. 
Okay, now, since these are inverses of each other, what do you think the domain is going to be? Well, you can take a look at the graph and notice that it starts at zero, but does not include zero because it's getting closer and closer and closer to this asymptote and it's getting bigger. It's going to the right. So x is greater than zero. Notice this. Notice, compare the two. The domain of the log is the range of the exponential function. So make a prediction. What do you think the range of the log is going to be? Correct. Good job. The domain of the exponential function. Let's take a look. It's going down infinitely. It's going up infinitely. So the range is going to be all real numbers. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at number two. So we have f of x equals log base 3 of x. So the inverse... Now, following the um, format given to us here, okay, notice they switch the argument and the base. Okay, so if we want the inverse of this logarithm, we would put the base down, which would be, this is going to be x. Actually, that's going to be um, so the base is 3. According to this, the base is 3. So for exponential, the base is 3. And then they took the argument and put it up as an exponent. Well, that might be a little bit confusing for us. So let's go back to what we've learned in the past. In order to find the uh, inverse of any function. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. And we know to find the inverse, what do we do with the x and the y? We switch them. Okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put the equals x on this side. And now I'm going to go ahead and convert this to exponential form. So our base is 3. Okay. Our exponent is x. And it's going to be equal to y. So there you have it. 3 to the x power. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our tables. Um, the simple one I think to do is this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do negative 2, negative 1. We want some negative numbers and some positive numbers. Okay? So 3 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 ninth. 3 to the negative 1 is going to be 1 third. 3 to the 0, 3 to the first, 3 squared. Inverse, switch them around. Okay, and now we can graph them. Okay, I took, I graphed our exponential function right here with our horizontal asymptote. Then I graphed our logarithmic function right here with our vertical asymptote. Okay, and of course we do have that line of symmetry going in between. Now let's go ahead and do the domain. The domain for the log is going to be x is greater than 0 because it starts at 0 but does not include 0 and gets bigger. Range, infinitely down and infinitely up. So all we have to do is switch them for the exponential function. These get switched. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. Looks like more of the same on the back. More of the same. Let's see. Um, let's take a look at number three together. Let's 
let's go ahead and do it this way. y equals 5 to the x. To get the inverse, we're going to switch the x and the y. Mm -hmm. And now we want to solve for y. So we want to bring that y down, down out of the exponent. So we need to take the log of both sides. Okay. Then using our power property that we learned, we're going to bring that y down front. Whoopsie. Okie dokie. Go Spurs go. Yeah. And solving for y. All right, so we get y equals log of x divided by log of 5. Okay, side note, change of base property, change of base property. Uh, here's how this works. Let's say we want to find the log of base uh, 6 of 7. Okay, we want to find out what that is. Change of base property says, simple, you take the log of the argument divided by the log of the base. Plug that into your calculator and out gets your answer. This is called change of base property. Okay, so like your calculator uses base 10, so you don't have to use change of base property for that. And some of you already know how to put the base in when you go into math. Um, but in, this is a property that can be used very easily. So let's say I have log of 10 divided by log of 2. Well, what was that? What was that? So if I'm going backwards, log, the argument was 10, the base is 2, going backwards, okay? So here we could say that y equals the log of the argument, the log of the base, and that is your inverse function using change of base property. Okay, you may need to re-watch this a time or two just to get this down. Okay, so going back, log of x base, I mean log base 5 of x. Five x, five x, right here, five x, five x. Okay. So what I want to see from you is I want to see your tables, your graph, your domain and range, and you can stop right there. Okay? I'll be checking for number three. I want to see it done. Have a good night. Go Spurs, go.